we have to remember now that the, the biggest workforce population are millennials. Yeah. They want something very different from work and they've always wanted something very different from work from the generations before them. Right. But they're very social. They want to know, like, and trust before they apply for a job. They want to know what it is going to be like to work for someone. Yes. What is that culture? What is that team? And if you're a small business owner, you have so much to give in this space because generally speaking, small businesses, it's that family first kind of approach. You understand flexibility. You understand that life happens and kids' schools plays are really important. And there's so much to offer in that, but how do you get that to shine through? So joining me on the line today, I've got Elizabeth Houghton from Sutton Fully. You better tell me the full name of the organization. Sutton Full Potential. Thank you. Um, look, today, today's topic is literally about the great, what, what, what's known as a great resignation, but I think you had a different spin on this. So um, maybe, maybe let's just dive straight in. A great resignation, what is it and what's your thoughts around it? Yeah, so my take on it is it's a great re-evaluation of mm-hmm. we've gone through this crazy two years where yeah. our lives have changed so much by no fault of our own or any organisation, completely unpredictable. But it's thrown us into this world of work from home and different levels of flexibility. And for some people, it's resulted in them not working and Mm. they've been able to reassess, well, what is important in life? And we all have, right? We've all had this ability to go, you know what? I don't want to work 40 to 50 hours a week. I don't want to commute for two hours a day. I actually really like being home for my kids or being able to have breakfast with my family before I go to work in the morning. So this great resignation as it's being called across the globe, it's not unique to Australia. This is happening across the globe right now. Yeah. Is from my perspective, come from people sitting back and really taking stock of what is important for them and Mm -hmm. what they want out of their careers, but also how they want their careers to fit in with their whole life. So instead of kind of molding their life around career it's now molding their career around their life and what they want interesting so so really i suppose when they say resignation it's literally people saying well how you used to employ me is not valid in my mind anymore Um, i've been shown the light i can work from home i can work from work i can choose to have a combination of whatever works for me yes yeah that's it we've been given yeah we've been shown the way like organizations and the world of work has been pushed forward like 50 maybe even 100 years in two years like that development of like it's just been supercharged like we've been talking about flexible working for a really long time but it's never really grabbed hold and so Mm. many organizations would review a request and still say no but all of a sudden they had no choice they were forced to allow people to work from home and work in a different model because offices couldn't be open depending on what sector you're in and that's shown people a different way of working and team members and employees for the most part want to hold on to that Mm. and if they've got employers that unfortunately aren't you know they haven't seen the light and not all of them have in some industries it's impossible like if you're service-based and you're a customer-facing role how do you create this abundance of flexibility well employees have to be there at reception right to Mm. welcome people in or um you know if you're a dental nurse like you have to physically be in the dentist surgery you can't do that via zoom right so there are some industries where it's different but people are just sitting back and going i want something different i don't want what i had yeah and they've taken stock and they've sat down but with that there's lots of complications now for businesses on how do they attract people's attention how do they get people or candidates to want to work for them and yes. there is so much demand for talent right now mm-hmm. um here in australia the demand is really high and there's lots of things that are played into that you know our borders have been shut so international talent isn't here we don't yes. have people on short-term work visas and so the pool is dramatically reduced mm. there's all of these jobs because people are resigning and saying, hey, I want something different. 
but it's still a candidate led market because there is not as many candidates, although they're it's resigning, really, there's yeah. less people looking for work. So the ball is in a candidate's court right now. Like they have the ability to say, you know what? I don't want to work for you. They're going to pay me more money. They're going to give me this. Yeah. Why would I apply for your job? And that is really tough for businesses. It is. It is. And, and just before we started this recording, we were talking about some examples about, and you, and you mentioned a few ideas around, you know, mm. making the workplace more attractive because of the nature of, well, the expectation people have. Do you want to yes. just give us a bit of a, a regurgitation of what you said before? But Yes, I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we have to remember now that the, the biggest workforce population are millennials. Yeah. They want something very different from work and they've always wanted something very different from work from the generations before them. Right. But they're very social. They want to know, like, and trust before they apply for a job. They want to know what it is going to be like to work for someone. Yes. What is that culture? What is that team? And if you're a small business owner, you have so much to give in this space because generally speaking, small businesses, it's that family first kind of approach. You understand flexibility. You understand that life happens and kids' schools plays are really important and there's so much to offer in that, but how do you get that to shine through? How do you ensure that candidates, not just in the millennial group, but younger, mm. how do you show what it is like to truly work for you and to be part of your team yeah. before they apply for a job with you? And an yeah. advert isn't going to cut it. Like no, An no, advert no. Isn't, doesn't give enough detail. They want to go poking around. They're going to check you out on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and depending on what industry you're in, maybe even TikTok, right? I so, thought you'd say that. And I know that sounds like crazy, yeah. um, but it's true. And oh, they God. want to get a true sense of, if I take this job, if I apply to work for this small business, yeah. what does that mean for me? Mm. Am I going to be able to do the school drop-off and the school pick-up? Am I going to, is it going to be okay if I phone in to say my dog is sick? Because, you know, fur babies are part of the family and more and more millennials have fur babies over actual babies. Yeah. And it's, they're part of the family. And they want to mm. know that, you know, that's going to be okay if they need to go to the vet. So how do you show that as a small business? How right. do you show that you truly care about people? And how do you showcase what it is to work for you? Mm -hmm. outside of a job advert so really um, like what, what i'm hearing is the traditional post an ad in seek and mm -hmm. get the resumes and go through the resumes and identify that's finished <laughs> yeah pretty much pretty much i actually read a really interesting post on a linkedin the other day where people were debating whether or not resumes are now a thing of the past mm. um, because they don't you know it's, it's a one pager or a two pager depending on what industry you're in how, even as a candidate, how do you truly express who you are? Yeah. Like it shows what you've done, but it doesn't show what your potential is or what you're capable of doing. It, you know, it's just a list of skills or yeah. achievements on a piece of paper. And candidates yeah. in the workforce now want so much more than that. And they want to give so much more than that. They want to show who they are, but they also want to know who their employer is. Yeah, it's even when you say on a piece of paper, it's, it's so 90s. <laughs> yes, um, right. The expectation, and, and we talk about this often, if, if we're looking at candidates, the first thing you do is Google them and yep. you find as much as you can about their social life because, you know, you, you touched on this and, and I think it's always been critical is that it's attitude is hard to measure on a resume, mm -hmm. right? And so all you're looking at is skills. And yep. if you ask the question, what's more important, skills or attitude? Attitude is always chosen first. So here we are, we have this platform where we can actually find out everything about someone yep. to a degree uh, mm. just by Googling them. And, and it's about their lifestyle choices. It's about their for babies, as you mentioned. Yeah. You'd know about that if you look at someone's uh, social media posts. Um, so really, like the small business owner is a bit stuck now because what used to work two years ago is now not working at all. And um, yeah. you've mentioned like, the whole idea of you have to be more open about what the workplace is like, what the benefits of working with you. It's mm. not about the hourly rate anymore, even to a large degree. No. And 
I, I don't think it's been about the hourly rates for a really long time. Um, yeah. you know, we look at key engagement and motivators. Very rarely is money at the top. Like, let's, mm. you know, money is important to everyone. We all need a certain amount to live. But yeah. generally speaking, when you ask people, that's not the reason why they're dissatisfied at work. Mm. That's not the main driver why people leave. There's loads of other stuff that goes into it. Yeah. And that comes down to well, what is the work environment? What is the leadership style? Yeah. You know, are they going to remember it's my birthday? Is it, am I going to get, I'm not saying you have to give birthday cakes, but are they just purely going to remember? Are you going to walk into work, into an office on your yeah. birthday and they're going to remember to say happy birthday to you? It's those real untangible things yeah. that are now very important because people want to know, like you said, employers are Googling candidates. Candidates are Googling you, I guarantee it. And they're Googling you more than what you are Googling them. <laughs> you want to find out something about that candidate. And that's why you jumped on Google. That's why you're on Facebook. That's why yeah. you know, you're doing these things. A candidate mm. wants to get that same enriched experience when they try and find out about you as an employer. Yeah. And yeah. there's so many ways a small business can do this. Mm -hmm. um, sit back and really evaluate what is your value proposition yeah. what is it you offer as an employer and that doesn't have to be the biggest salary in the world it doesn't have to be bonuses it doesn't have to be you know a birthday present it can be that real untangible stuff of well you know what if x happens we're not going to say no you can go home if you need to go home we're going to care about you we're yeah. actually going to care about you as a person mm. so how do you show that how do you display that and that's a challenge. Well, it is. And it also, is what, what, you can't take a picture of your gym at work because you probably don't have one. You're too, you know, that's mm. not what you offer. But how do you showcase you? And you do that through getting your current employees and teammates on board. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, Glassdoor, there's a review system on there. It's free. Go and get, ask all of your current employees to write a review about what it is like to work for you. Yeah, right. Ask your employees to get active on social media and be okay with them posting pictures of, you know, team building activities or, yeah. you know, some coffee in the office, whatever it may be. Yes, there's, you know, depending on which industry you're in, you might want to set some guidelines around confidentiality and making sure, you know, things that shouldn't be shared aren't being shared because yeah, right. that's the nature of work. Uh -huh. But also being really open for employers to openly talk about yeah. what it is like to work here mm -hmm. on that personable level. Not yeah. this is the job, these are the tasks you're going to have to do. That's important. You know, everyone wants to feel like there's meaning and purpose in their work and they're going to achieve something and have something interesting yeah. to do. Brilliant. But the people they hang out with and the people they get to work with that is the thing that makes people stay. And that is the thing that makes people want to work for you. It's funny because as you describe this, and we often talk about attracting high caliber team members because going and finding them is super difficult. Mm. And uh, most of them aren't looking. Right? No. Anyone who's a high caliber team member is probably working. And so yeah. when you put an ad in Seek, the assumption is that they're looking. And mm. um, what you've just described is cre creating a, a channel or multiple channels that show people the inside of my business so that they can investigate it at their own leisure yep. and understand what it's like to work there without me having to knock on a door and say, hey, you're interested in a job. Yeah. 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 So, so this whole idea of being attractive, let, let's talk about the sort of the action steps. What can, what can someone in small business do today to, to combat be attractive? This? So that Glassdoor thing, 100%, if you don't have a profile on Glassdoor, jump onto Glassdoor. It is free. Make yep. one. There's templates in there that you can upload. If you have employee emails, you can upload all of your emails and just send it out to your teammates and say, hey, can you all write a review? Hopefully they all give you five stars because they love working for you. You don't want them to, you don't want them to lie. You don't want them to, you know, be unauthentic in that feedback, but you want that feedback. So that is the easiest step right because yeah it's like buying a product right yeah. we all do our research we read a load of reviews and if the majority of people say it's good you know we're okay with a few disgruntled product reviews but if the most people say it's good then and that's what we, we buy right yeah. yeah and you want someone to buy your brand you want yeah, someone really. to want to come and work for you so if you're selling a product selling your product to a customer 
-hmm. It's a very similar process to marketing yourself to a a potential potential team member. Exactly. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. traditionally with Lixil, it's so separately, but really it's quite similar. It's almost identical. (laughs) Yeah. How do I engage someone with my brand? How do I make someone so connected to my brand and what we offer that they want to work for me? Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Because uh, I often say to people, marketing for customers and marketing for employees is exactly the same. Yeah. Um, it's about being authentic. It's about showing people the value proposition for mm-hmm. both sides. The only difference yep. is you pay one person and the other one pays you. So it's just the reversal of the transaction, right? Yeah. But there's still a value transaction that occurs. So it's it's a, it's about being attractive, but not only being attractive as a business, making sure that uh, people can access that information. Yeah. 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 So so, so glass door, definitely. Glass door, it's free. Go do that. Easy. Do that. LinkedIn is a great place to hang out. Um, LinkedIn business pages are free. Um, You can pay for extra, which gives you more functionality. But as a small Mm -hmm. business, I wouldn't say you need to pay for LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is probably going to hate me for saying that. Just use the free function. Yeah create your business page, have a landing page, connect it to your website, connect it to your other socials yes. and every now and then post something on there. So there is some content, mm-hmm. but on your personal page, post more content. Yeah. So try and post content three times a week. And I know that probably for some business owners, they're like, Oh my God, I don't have the time to do this. It really doesn't need to take much time. Yes. Um, be consistent. So if you're going with Monday, Wednesday, Friday, although I wouldn't post on a Friday on LinkedIn, no one's interested. So like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and you say to yourself, I'm going to post at 7.30 every morning. That's what you do. You post on those three days at that time and you are consistent with it. And do a real mix of product service. So engaging potential clients Mm -hmm. and then a few insights into what it is like to work there. So it could be a shout out to a team member who's done something amazing. What have they done? Celebrating wins. Yeah. Um, sharing pictures of the monthly barbecue, whatever it may be. So mm-hmm. mix up that content and ensure at least one post a week is very much around connecting someone to your culture of your organization. What is it like to work for you? Mm-hmm. So that I would add be- one more layer. Uh, yep, just on. cl- uh, case studies or client story. So, so yes. really, if you're talking about the employees and what it's like to work for you, it should be also about the clients that you have and what mm-hmm. it's like to use you as a provider. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and then if you feel like it, um, this is where it gets overwhelming for small businesses and then because there's so many social platforms, mm. um, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. I think um, um, when you talk about places this, to be. Yeah, being on those platforms, it's the same content, isn't yeah. it? So yeah. it's like it's like different channels. Like you can see mm. Coca-Cola ad on channel seven, channel nine, channel ten. It's the same ad, just different yes. channel. So yeah. it sounds overwhelming, but I think there either needs to be someone in charge of the communication or yeah. a marketing person who understands the marketing is not just about clients, it's also about employees. Mm. And uh, you just talked about what we call the communication rhythm. Yep. And that's just saying just keep communicating so people know you're alive. Yep. And they know that it's not just I paid for three articles, so now I can post three articles and I'm done. Yeah. Um, people do this lip service thing where they, they, they think it's just about having some content. But from what you've described today, it sort of resonates with this whole idea. It's not, it's not content. It's finger on the pulse. It's a window on the door yeah. so I can see what's actually going on live. And if I talk about what happens in my business every week, I'll never run out of content. That's it. And it's just authentic content and you don't have to overthink it. You don't have to write these 500 or to a thousand word blogs every week. It can just be a small form caption post, depending on what platform you're using. Okay. So LinkedIn right now, depending on when you're watching this. So we're on the 3rd of December, LinkedIn right now likes text only posts. Interesting. So the algorithm is picking up on those. It loves them. They don't need to be really long text only posts. If you do have links, if you're talking about products or you're talking about something that's on your website, put the link to your website in the comments because it will track better than if you actually put it in the actual post. This may change. LinkedIn may go back to favoring videos or pictures later down the line. But as of today, text only posts on LinkedIn where Mm -hmm. Instagram, you have to have a picture. You can't post about a picture. Yes. And Instagram, it's social. 
So they don't really want to be educated, right? People don't necessarily want a mm. whole bunch of how-to guides, depending on what industry you're in, right? They they want something fun. They want something authentic. They yeah. want to see into your business. Yeah. And it's more of a social, like what is going to be engaging for them from a social not web, where LinkedIn, you can do more educational stuff and mm-hmm. it will get traction. Okay. LinkedIn, um, Facebook and Instagram, you can post the same stuff. You don't have yeah. to post different content. So what about TikTok? It's all about TikTok. Um, but yeah, and then just quickly on Facebook and Instagram before we move <laughs> on to TikTok, um, they have a free tool. So if you have a business page, yeah. there is a free scheduling tool. So sit down once a month and just schedule out your posts and be yeah. done with it. Like don't, yeah. don't overthink it. Don't overcomplicate it for yourself. Don't think, oh my God, I need to spend five hours a week doing social posts. Just sit down once a month plan it out, schedule it all in. Facebook will automatically post it all for you. Done. Awesome. So you, uh, it sounds like we're having a conversation about marketing, not about recruiting. <laughs> but it, 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 yeah, but as you said, it's, it's so similar. So what's so your thoughts? Similar. Like th- th- This is really building the raft of communication and sending mm. the brand out there. What about in the shorter term? So people who are struggling right now because they're yep. saying the market's dry, people are coming as asking for ridiculous amounts of money, How do we navigate this as a business? Being really clear on what your value proposition is. Right. Really, really clear. So when you're talking to candidates, when candidates are applying for work with you, when Mm. you're doing that phone screen, you are telling them why you are the better place to work over the place that's offering 5K, 10K more than you. Um, What is it that they are going to get from working for you that they are not going to get from the big corporate down the road. Why do they want to work for you? You want to connect with their hearts, minds, and souls in that phone conversation. Fantastic. So it sounds like the marketing department has to take over recruitment as well. <laughs> yes, it does sound a bit like that, doesn't it? It's, it's just having that connection. Yeah, um, if, depending on where you're based as a small business, mm. connecting with your local community is, yeah. you know, if you're, potentially not going to have people that are going to travel to you. You know, you're going to be recruiting within your local community or have a presence in your local community. Ensure your local community supports your brand, knows what you do and is connected with what you do because you're potentially their neighbor, right? Yes. Not just in business, but actually your physical neighbor in the suburb in which you live in. So how do you build up that? connection with your community Mm. so get involved in things have conversations um talk to people in your local community and talk about what it is you offer so this is um because you you, you're sort of just broaching a topic which is a a bit of a sore point at the moment which is you know there's a monopoly in the uh, recruitment space for advertising and that's sick Mm -hmm. Uh, seek i'm not i'm not a fan because it's a monopoly but more importantly because it's uh it's where people go when they're looking for work. Yes. So yeah. if I'm posting on Seek and I'm not getting responses and I understand that I need to communicate more with my community, what's the go-to strategy? So what's the next step? Um, so to communicate more with your community? So, so I'm looking for, and, and we touched on this prior to the yep. call, is the sort of the factory worker. Mm-hmm. Right. That, that, that's a space that used to be a lot of uh, immigrants coming into the country or people yep. who are travelling. Um, that's all stopped. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden, there's just no one applying in these jobs. Doesn't matter where I advertise them. What do I do? <laughs> Connect in with your local high schools. Connect in with your local TAFEs. Mm-hmm. Be open to people who want to work part time. Yes. Don't just say this is a full time job and it's a full time job only. You could get some amazing people who are studying who want to work three days a week or two days a week. So yes, you'll need more people to cover that. But where where are your idle candidates? Where are they hanging out? Mm -hmm. Where are they in your community? Do your research and then go and talk to them. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. We can go on for hours, but I'm going to stop you there. (laughs) Elizabeth, um, there's so many ideas. And really, I suppose what we've talked about is reframing the thought process around recruitment and sort of, looking at it as a marketing strategy. Yeah. And even with a marketing strategy, there must be a clear definition of why should I work for you? Yeah. Um, how are you communicating what it's like to be there? Mm-hmm. Um, making sure that we're transparent with, with yes. um, the things that we're doing. And so we've got an open channel of communication. 
Yeah. So um, is there anything that you'd like to add on top of everything we've discussed as a, as a sort of way to wrap this up? I guess don't give up. I know it's really hard right now as any employer, and it's not just small business that is struggling. All employers are struggling. Yep. Keep going. Yeah. And really do your homework. Where is your ideal candidate? Where are they hanging out? And that is where you want to be. And that is where you need to be. And that's where you need to start making connections. Yeah. And yeah, seek adverts are great. But right now, they're probably not getting you the traction you need. So be creative. How are you going to stand out from the crowd? Yes. How are you going to go and find that candidate? I think this is a test of innovation, isn't it? It's yes. like there's, there's an event that's occurred. And, uh, you know, there's an old formula I use often, which is the outcome of an event is the event plus the response. Yep. Okay, so often people say, oh, this has happened, it's all dried up, and you go, well, that's just an event. It's happened to everybody. Mm. Right? The question is, what are you doing about it? Yeah. And uh, if you say, well, I don't know what to do, that's re really nothing. Um, or if you say, I'm not sure what to do, well, that's still nothing. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to try some things and see if they work. Now we're moving. So now we have a response. Yeah, yeah. test things that, out. Stand yeah. out from the crowd. Don't do what everyone else is doing. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Elizabeth, thanks, thanks so much for your time today. This has been awesome. So I really appreciate no, thank it. Thank you.